NGO forum on ADB uh, has a primary goal of uh, making the Asian Development Bank and the Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank responsible and accountable for both the projects and policies that they are implementing across various nations. On the start of this campaign, we will be only talking about one project which is called the Kundalia Irrigation Project, which is in the Rajgarh district of Madhya Pradesh. The most uh, striking thing about this Kundalia Irrigation Project is, it seems to be a surrogate way of supporting the controversial interlinking of rivers. Several of these reservoirs, as they are calling it surplus, are, are going to be enabling the uh, linkage of Parvati, Kali Siddhi and Chambal rivers which are in a drier region and uh, also you know, will have a lot of implications about what happens when interbasin transfer of water takes place. The forest clearance for the project was uh, you know, pushed through very fast you know, because it happens to be one of the projects which has been logged in into the Prime Minister's portal for uh, quicker clearances. The main components of this project is a 2.35 km earthen dam and a saddle dam which will also be about 2 km long. So which raises the question as to why one should build a dam where it requires an equal, equally large saddle dam because normally saddle dams are small valleys which are adjacent to larger valleys. So this seems to be an inappropriate site for actually going around and building a dam. And uh, also, you know, this project which is supposed to be completed by September 2025 composes of various other aspects of irrigation. There is a right bank and a left bank canal system and it is supposed to irrigate somewhere close to about 75,000 uh, hectares in the command area. If we look at the kind of impacts that are going to be there, it has, it has close to about 74 square kilometers of submergence, 7,476 hectares of uh, submergence area. And if we look at the entire requirement in terms of where they will uh, dispose the muck that is generated, the canal areas, the approach land, the colonies, it comes up to close to about 8,000 hectares, which is about 80 square kilometers of area. When we look at uh, how the reservoir spreads out, you find that river, it enables direct transfer through pipeline to the Chambal River. And uh, so this kind of long distance transfer, uh, though uh, it might seem within, within a small watershed, but you know, these kind of transfers and are going to lead to more complications as to who has rights over water, what are the riparian rights of different river systems. And if we see the nature of the submergent zone, we find that a good uh, you know, agricultural land, nearly about 15 square kilometers of good agricultural land uh, is going to be submerged in it. And uh, we also know that close to about uh, 50 villages are going to be directly affected by this project and which means totally about 5,300, around 5,300 families are going to be displaced uh, directly due to this project. Number of uh, measures that are uh, mentioned for resettlement in the uh, pre-feasibility report, in the environmental clearance report and various other documents one, we, one, one of the things we find is they are extremely inconsistent with each other. Second, though the project has come up after 2013 when the new land acquisition law came up, still talk about the national rehabilitation policy of 2007 and the Madhya Pradesh policy for resettlement of people, which is far beneath the kind of standards that have been laid down in 2013. When we look at uh, you know the kind of uh, resources that have been kept aside uh, as compared to the overall size of the project, the uh, the project has only about 10% uh, of the overall cost that are meant for the entire project that is left for resettlement, rehabilitation, 
and the environmental aspects of the project. And when you look at the overall uh, costs that uh, are going to be invested on resettlement, it looks as if a family will be able to get a, on an average a, an amount which is going to be less than 10 lakh, maybe about 7 to 8 lakhs or 9 lakhs, which is uh, 900,000 is a very, very small number for a family to resettle itself. There are going to be impacts on water resources, there are going to be impacts on various other downstream users and we also know these areas can have a lot of problems with uh, salinity increase and various other. When we look at the financing of it, the, the ADB has granted a 26 year term loan of 375 million dollar for this project. Another 160.71 million is what the government of Madhya Pradesh is supposed to bring. What is the trick that ADB has played in this whole project? The ADB, though it is a major uh, investor in the project, as you can see, 368, 350 versus 160 million dollar, the ADB claims that the components that it is funding is on the canals, the uh, the other irrigation systems that it is going to bring together and not on the reservoir itself and therefore you know it is hiding behind the fact that there is a lot of uh, displacement in the project and is not willing to take responsibility probably of that. Then we, we, we see that the project has not considered the fact whether it should support an interlinking project and what will be the cumulative implications of these kind of projects. And thirdly, what we are finding is by introducing new kind of systems, for instance, downstream irrigation is supposed to be done through uh, high uh, investment intensive uh, irrigation systems, micro irrigation systems, which will use steel pipes and uh, also this is uh, being uh, pushed out as a design build operate system for private entities to come and take over. And the right bank canal is already being uh, developed by Larson and Cubro. So you, you find that slowly the irrigation system over which the farmer had control will now completely be privatized and will be under the control of some designer, builder and operator of this uh, program. We will be tracking this, uh, you know, we will be looking at what is happening to people in the submergence zone, what is happening to people in the command area, we will look at what these structures have implications on and we'll also look at uh, you know issues that the communities are you know raising already there have been protests in many of these areas and uh, in fact there have been also some uh, court cases where people who's who, who had uh, land in that area have been now displaced saying that uh, they had been compensated earlier for a project which never came up this is the beginning of a a tracking that we are all collectively going to do and uh, we also hope that uh, institutions like ADB and other multilateral development banks start looking at the due diligence process more seriously and not as a tick box mechanism that it has been happening as of now.